My name is Jason Ackworth and I'm a paediatric emergency physician working at the Queensland Children's Hospital in Brisbane. I also have the privilege of serving on the Australian Resuscitation Council as the convener of the ANSCOR Paediatric Advanced Life Support Subcommittee. We are very pleased to announce the release of our updated ANSCOR Paediatric Life Support Guidelines set for 2021. These guidelines have been updated after a review of the updated evidence on paediatric resuscitation published in the ILCOR 2020 Consensus on Science with Treatment Recommendations, CoSTAR Statements. ILCOR has implemented a continuous evidence evaluation process to facilitate more timely delivery and dissemination of high quality resuscitation evidence. And our new ANSCOR Paediatric Life Support Guidelines are now set up to allow a more regular review and updating process. Now this round of guidelines doesn't contain any major changes to the way we will be teaching or performing paediatric resuscitation. Rather, we have provided a more logical and defined structure to the guidelines. We've given clearer definitions regarding who should be using our guidelines and on whom you should be using them. And we provided lots of pictures to demonstrate the resuscitative techniques we describe. Our new five guideline set is condensed from the previous seven paediatric guidelines and now includes Guideline 12.1, Paediatric Basic Life Support for Health Professionals, a new guideline focusing on provision of paediatric BLS by health professionals responsible for the care of infants and children in the pre-hospital and hospital setting. Guideline 12.2, Paediatric Advanced Life Support, which outlines the next steps in the continuum of care with availability of more advanced skills and resources. Guideline 12.3, management of other non-arrest arrhythmias in infants and children, including SVT, VT and bradycardia. Guideline 12.4, paediatric resuscitation in special circumstances, covering arrest associated with trauma, sepsis, hypothermia, toxic ingestions, known congenital heart disease, or in settings where ECMO is available. And guideline 12.5, management after return of spontaneous circulation. This last guideline provides advice on ongoing care, including blood pressure, ventilation, and temperature management after ROS. It also provides commentary on when CPR should be stopped and some notes on post-event debriefing for rescuers. Some of the practice updates in this round of guidelines include a de-emphasis of the value of pulse check as a determinant of the need to commence CPR, continuing support for the use of conventional CPR over chest compression only CPR with data from large registry studies showing better outcomes when ventilations are provided, particularly in children. Stronger support for the continued use of bag valve mask ventilation during CPR rather than interrupting chest compressions for ETT or suprabiotic airway insertion. And updated terminology regarding active control of temperature in children achieving ROSC after arrest with an emphasis on strict avoidance of hyperthermia. ANSCOR is also in the process of updating all of our flowcharts with a new fresh and consistent look. So over the next few months, look out for our updated paediatric BLS and paediatric ALS flowcharts, which will be added to guidelines 12.1 and 12.2 as appendices. We certainly hope you find our latest guidelines useful in your practice and that together through provision of high quality resuscitative techniques, we can improve the recognition, treatment and survival critically ill children in our communities.